Well, we're in the back room, which as you guys know, most of my space is jammed and cluttered with stuff. Uh, I needed to get through it and had it in pretty good shape till I stacked it full of honey supers. And it got crowded again. So I got the heater running out here. And I've been trying to run it up about 90 degrees so the stuff will flow. Bowie's out helping me. Got a fly on his head. You got a fly on your head, Bowie. Yeah. So we were out here a little earlier and he was fussing and then finally took a nap. Believe it or not, slept right through the extraction process for a while. Then he woke up and was fine, and then he had a little fuss again, so he was hungry. It was lunchtime, so we went in and had lunch. Now he's back to happy. He's a pretty good kid. When he fusses, there's something wrong. He's got to figure out what it is. So, the rest of the time, you're pretty happy, huh, boy? Yeah. So, what I've got going here, I've, a lot of these supers aren't completely full. Some of it isn't completely capped. So, as I go through it, those will go back out to the bees. Um, I got a hot knife. In some of that used equipment, which is really cool. I didn't have one last year. Last year, I only had a couple of frames of, uh, or a couple boxes worth of stuff to do. I've got an old galvanized extractor that I got really cheap, which is uh, not something you want to run honey through. Uh, the galvanizing, they found, the acid in the honey would eat off some of the zinc and could create problems. But I was able to pick this up which is a, a clear epoxy. Uh, I got it from Man Lake, and it did a great job. I put three coats on everything in there. So it's completely coated. There's no none of the zinc showing um, that'll get into the honey. And I don't have all that much really to do. So um, my knife is smoking. Time to turn it down a little bit. Um, if I had much more than this, I'd take it to, to Dave's and... Uh, We'd run it through his electric extractor, but I just have a little to do here. And the neighbor was out of honey, so figured I'd better get some extracted. All right, well, I'm going to set up and do a little of this, and I'll get some more clips as I'm rolling through it. All right, most of you guys that are watching this have done a lot more of this than I have. Anyway, but uh, we'll go through it for maybe some that haven't. So I rigged a decapping tank with a plastic sack in two deeps uh, and then I'm cutting my cappings into it and this will show a little bit this one looks like it'll come pretty clean but uh, the big boys run nine frames in their deep because the bees will build it out deeper which means it's easier to cut the cappings off you don't miss any when they get decapped um, and so when it sticks out far enough, it cuts off nice and clean. But any area that was below the, the level of the two bars doesn't get uncapped. And you've got to then go through and do that separate. So if half the frame's that way, it's a major pain and a lot slower to, uh, to get it uncapped. So, and I found that if I just take my hive tool and get this wax off because the, the hot knife isn't so hot that it cuts through the wax like butter it just helps it glide through as you cut it um, so it wouldn't melt that heavier wax but as you see now I just covered that whole side without getting any so there's a bevel on the point of this if I bring that in some it'll drop the level of the hot knife down on the two bars and a lot of times that's enough to get it and here it's going to be hit and miss all the way and so you end up just coming inside and trying to get them opened up because the honey won't come out of them if you leave the cappings on so this one's got pretty hard cappings on it must have been in there for a while but we'll get it uncapped and hopefully next year they'll draw it out a little deeper so there it is pretty much uncapped um, then I'm just can leave them sit here till I get a bunch ready 
which I do have ready now. So I'll adjust the camera height and make you listen to my rattly contraption. So I had trouble last year holding it on the kitchen table. And so this year, I guess I'll bring you over and show you. I brought it out here in the, in the shop um, and warmed it all up. But I lag bolted into the studs and put a strap on this thing it's setting up on a box that's holding the wood stove for the tent and it's uh it's a lot nicer it really holds it steady uh when you crank it otherwise if they're a little out of balance it flops everywhere So that does one side of them, then you turn them around. Ha! Ah, that one I forgot to cut. I don't know why I do that. Fairly regular. So they kind of enjoy the decapping, so it's surprising to me that I don't get both sides, but. About every eighth or ninth one, I find I missed one side. Well, they usually do a box of them, get four of them in the machine, put the rest of them in my little decapping tank here. Then I can turn my knife down uh, so it's not sitting there hot all the time. And spin out that box. how that works and then uh, just leaving the gate open and letting it run out into the bucket and I've got a paint filter in there to screen it with and I, I did invest in a uh, expensive high-tech gravity uh, filter system that I'll show you in the house when we get in there a little later well here's my high-tech gravity filter system I just tied the bag to the light uh, luckily I put in the electrical box so I know that it's attached well and I didn't hang the bag when it was full but anyway that's my filter system and it seems to have worked it's mostly cappings that are left in there so oh. Um, I think honey extraction is going to be a success this year. <laughs>